Hey game makers, it's game dev. So I missed it last time, but did commit uh, after after the end of the last video. Uh, just brought in True State, Rogue Sprites. That's all we really got got done. I guess we did jumping as well, but that was kind of the gist of it. So what are we gonna do this time? Uh, well, I tiptoed around it last time, and that didn't feel good. So let's get camera stuff in. Uh, I'm not gonna make any like concrete decisions about resolution or aspect ratio or anything like that and the camera will definitely have to get more complicated in the future as platforming cameras can be uh, very complicated so we're just going to get some basic stuff in so that we can move around the room and not have to worry about you know staying up in the top left corner of the uh, test room up here so let's build ourselves a little little camera manager i always go back and forth between whether i want the camera object to be separate from like, the display and resolution manager who handles things like the window size and uh, application surface size, things like that. Uh, for now, I'm going to make them the same and be willing to split them up if it gets too complicated. Uh, so let's just call this for now object camera. Now, there's lots and lots of ways to do this. Uh, but more or less, I still use the same process that I used in my GMS2 cameras as simple as possible video. There's a few differences, but basic idea, I'm making a pixel art game right now. Who knows if it's going to be pixel art forever, but it is pixel art right now. So to get my base resolution, I'm going to take 1920 by 1080 and divide it by a whole number and that's going to be my resolution for now. So let's do that. What do I want my... Let's see, so we'll call this... I'm going to make it a macro. I like using macros for this sort of stuff. So there's our base width is going to be uh, 1920 divided by, I don't know, 4. Base height is 19, or 1080 divided by 4. Same number. Uh, in fact, we could just do macro, base, scale, uh, factor is four. All of these can be base factor. All right. Uh, I know that I'm going to need a lot of these random kind of macros. In fact, I use them so often, I have a separate thing in my helpful scripts folder just for like macro sets. Uh, really, this is, the, this is the main one, though. So I've got all of these. So I'm going to move these out into here. So these are just quick shortcuts to your display width, window width, view position, view macro, you know, just GUI width, GUI height, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so these are really handy. I like having these anytime I want. So I just never have to write camera get view X or camera get view width or do the calculations to find the right side of the screen. It really just speeds things up. Uh, I like the way it reads in my code. So, uh, so here we go. We've got our base width and our base height. We're going to uh, set our window to that size. So, well, let's see, what's our window scale? What do, our, what do we want our window scale to be? Let's do window scale equals two. Uh, ow, it's not my edge at all, is it? Window scale equals two. Uh, window set size. Uh, base width times. Now oh, it's in here somewhere. There it is. I I can't. You know it's funny. It's a little little side note here. So my uh, my desk setup is a little unusual, and I cannot see my keyboard at all, uh, which doesn't prevent me from typing, but. There are a few special characters that I have not gotten used to uh, finding without glancing down briefly, uh, as we just as we saw. So a little embarrassing, but you know, it's harder to type without looking at your keyboard than you think, especially when it comes to finding special characters. So that's what just happened there. And you'll, you know, when you catch me doing it, shout me out in the comments. Uh, okay, so window set size, base width times window scale. Base height times oh times the scale. 
Uh, I'm going to use subpixels, so I'm also going to this resized uh, base width and scale and base height times window scale. All right. So we've got our resize. Now, window set size, we want a window center after we set size. What I used to do and what I did in my other tutorial is uh, just use an alarm. Uh, and that's a very easy way to do it. You just say alarm zero equals one, and then zero window center. I don't know why there's so many spaces here. I probably did that in my settings. I don't care. It's fine. Uh, okay, so uh, now the window will center. There's a new way you can do it. There's this new uh, thing they added in Game Maker recently called like time sources, where you can say, hey, hey, after five milliseconds, call this function. Uh, and so you could say, I haven't looked into how to use them, but I definitely want to. I might do just the tiniest bit of research before I try and record myself using them. I also understand there's a new function coming that's available in the beta that's coming soon to stable that simplifies it even further and just says like, call this later is the name of the function. You can say like 10 frames, call it, uh, which is pretty cool. I'm excited for that. Uh, so maybe I'll hold off until that update comes through and then I'll fix this and use that in lots of other places. Uh, so for now, we'll just use the alarm. And then in our room start, we're going to do our other stuff. So I'm going to say view visible zero equals true. View enabled equals true. Camera set view size equals view. Base width and base height. Okay, so now we're kind of set up there. And uh, this guy's definitely got to be persistent. And then we're going to do a very simple follow the character, just dead center, right? Nothing fancy right now, just follow my character. So, uh, uh, well, first we'll check if the character exists. If, uh, not instance this of object player and uh, exit exit return doesn't really matter uh, this is called an early out it's a way to make it so your code doesn't creep to the right because i hate code that creeps to the right with brackets and brackets and brackets it um, makes me feel gross so i avoid it wherever possible so instead of saying if instance exists object player then go ahead and focus on the character uh, I'm just going to say, if the character doesn't exist, get out. Don't do anything. So now I know the character does exist. So I can say uh, our x equals object player dot x uh, minus view width divided by 2. Our y equals object player dot y minus view height divided by 2. And then camera set view position view x, y. And uh, I could clamp it. I'm not even going to worry about that right now. I'm not 100% sure I want to clamp the view. So we'll just see what that looks like. It's going to ruminate instances and add our object camera. Put it up in the top. And let's see what we got. Oh, wrong number of arguments for surface resize. Oh, right. I need to tell it which surface. Resize. There we go. Now, go wherever we want. It looks nice. We can make the camera a little bigger or the window a little bigger if we wanted. Uh, but ultimately, that's pretty much what we were going for. This one I could get up there at one point. Just doing a little, yeah, whatever. Uh, so you come in here and say window scale three, make it a little bit bigger. There we go. That looks nice. All smooth. 
great. So it's not the most interesting camera in the world, but it works and it'll make it so that we can build large test levels and start experimenting with the different stuff. Uh, is there anything else we want to add to this before ending it? I mean, it's so simple that it's almost it's insulting. It's so simple. You know what though? That's that's kind of been the theme of this of this series so far is just get it in, get it working, move on to the next thing. Realize you're going to need to come back and make it better later. So we'll do that. And we'll come back next time and work on something else.